Desire and fulfillment. Start a tapping. If you ain't tapping yet, time to start tapping. Ah. You know, in spiritual circles, oftentimes, I fell into this, there was this idea about uh, desire. Our, our world, we tend to like, you know, get whatever you want, you can have it all, every desire is yours to have. It's, it's, almost, it's almost hedonistic, right? <laughs> have no limits or anything. And on the other side, it's, oh no, desire is the source of suffering. We need to transcend all desires, deny our humanness. Both of those sound kind of stupid, don't they? <laughs> they both sound like, that can't possibly be it. Human life cannot be so compartmentalized, so extreme. I have real desires, real ones. And it feels very painful when they're not fulfilled. And sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm allowed to fulfill them. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to start by just allowing our own desires. And then maybe we'll connect the dot between the dots between desire and fulfillment. Maybe they're not two different things. All right, karate chart point. Even though there's a part of me that denies my desires, and another part of me that grabs onto them, <laughs> like, like a dog with a bone. I totally accept the fact that there's this duplicity, this inner conflict between desire and fulfillment, whether I should have desire, whether it's the right desire. I totally accept that this is kind of confusing. So even though I've got both deep desires, even a lust for them, and a fear of them, and a misunderstanding of them, I recognize that I'm, I actually have two opposing views at the same time. And that's what people can do. And I accept it. And I love myself anyway. So even though desire can be kind of confusing, it can become so intense and then so painful. I'm open to the possibility that maybe, just maybe, I can come to see desire as it is and be at peace about it. Maybe even fulfill it. Either way, I love and accept myself anyway. At least I'm open to. Let's tap to the points. The arising of desire. What could be more natural? What could possibly be more natural than just the arising of desire? It's like, like my hair growing, like digesting food. It's just there. I didn't create my desires. They just happened. Now, I was told, trained, sometimes had it beaten into me, Certain desires are okay. Most aren't. <laughs> what if that was just them? My parents' cultural bias? Maybe their religious bias? Maybe their incapacity to own their own desires? That I took on as my own? What if there's no such thing as a bad desire? Maybe a bad execution on it. I acknowledge the fact that my desires came a bit, became a bit scary. I mean, if a desire arises and then I express that desire and I got hurt, shamed, maybe even abused. I don't want that desire to arise. Of course, when you're a kid, 
you can't acknowledge the fact that well, the desire is okay. Just it's not acceptable here. I'll bide my time, and later on, I'll I'll be able to do it. Kids don't see things that way. Me bad. This desire bad. Can't feel it. Which eventually would mean, whenever the desire arises, it triggers suffering. Not because there's anything wrong with it. Because it always gets hurt when it appears. So of course I learned to be afraid of my desires. Of course I learned to reject them. Of course I learned to abandon the ones that weren't allowed. Of course I learned to dumb them down and make them acceptable. But what if all that was was an appearance? And the desires are simply what they are and are still that. I'm going to allow myself to open up to allow my desires as they are. Yep, that can trigger some fear and some resistance. And that's okay. My nervous system is a bang up job in keeping me safe, making sure that desires didn't get exposed, and making me present the right presentation to the environment, all the while denying myself, myself. Denying what in fact I was feeling, characterizing them as bad or sinful, when they were pure innocence. I'm totally owning it. I'm giving myself permission to own my desires, even when there's some fear around them. I recognize now that a lot of them are much smaller that I, in my experience than they really are. I've had to kind of dull the big ones the bigger the desire, the more trouble I got in. I'm going to let myself let them out now. I'm going to let myself dream big, aspire big, and even allow myself the fulfillment of them. Maybe the fulfillment of desire is inherent in the desire. Maybe all that energy that had to be suppressed and I'm beginning to release now is the energy that actually brings about its ultimate fulfillment. Maybe it won't look like what I think it's going to look like. Matter of fact, it probably won't. The desire knows what it is. It knows what it wants. I don't need to. I don't have to give it the energy. It's already got it. I just have to give it permission to move. And to provide a safe space in which it can. If it seems to be way out there, okay. If it seems to be, oh, that's too hedonistic, well, Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's too selfish? Well, maybe it isn't. Maybe there's no such thing as a bad desire or an egoic desire. What if the desire's always been pure? I'm giving myself the ability and the permission to create a safe space for my desires to grow, become more purified, become more powerful, 
and to ultimately fulfill themselves. And I'm letting go of the idea that somehow these desires could be anything but pure goodness, love, and wisdom. I'm giving myself permission to, to love my own nature as the expression of the desire of the entire universe to love itself. All right, take a nice deep breath. I've got some videos coming just on breathing. It's so good. <laughs> breathing. I don't know what the videos are. I just keep working on them. Thank you guys for listening to this. It means a lot to me. Um, this message means a lot to me. And um, so uh, I hope it does to you as well. But please like, share, make some comments. I try to answer every single comment. If I didn't, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I just got overwhelmed and I didn't see it. So until next time, please, please, please allow yourself the freedom to love, the freedom to desire, because everything about you is actually beautifully, originally innocent. Namaste. Hey everybody, this is GP and thank you. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you really like this work and you like uh, the meaning of it, it's been beneficial and helping, please give me money. No, really, <laughs> seriously, please like, share, tell your friends, advertise, buy stock, and send me money. It obviously takes a lot to keep this going. It, I, I, I do it all myself, all the, um, all the uh, technical work and the like. I try to keep expenses as low as possible. And every little penny helps. So if you just go over to my site, um, well, not my site, it's patreon.com slash gpwalsh, and, um, and give me as much as you possibly can. And of course, remember, if you do, good things are going to come to you. You'll be, have, be bestowed with blessings and wonder and life and weight loss and everything you could possibly ever, ever, ever want. But remember, if you don't, bad things are going to happen. All right, well, bad things aren't ever going to happen, but that has nothing to do with it. But if you really like this, please help me out and let me keep doing this for, for little and new cost and giving courses and meditations, all sorts of stuff to people who otherwise couldn't afford it. So help me out, friends, and I'll help you out. Let's wash each other's back. Love you. Namaste.